Welcome back. Um, now we're going to take a look at what we just did as if we are a student. One thing you want to probably have written on your board up front for Twin Falls School District people is tiny URL. dot com forward slash buzz 411. You want that because it's a lot easier to type that in to get to their student account than typing in isd 411.buzz.agilixapps.com forward slash student forward slash login. Yeah, it's a lot easier. I've last year as a dealing with sixth grade students it worked wonderful many times they'd go home I tried tiny URL and it didn't work I said did you put the whole address in oh so they will remember the tiny URL but it takes them a little while okay so before we go we were just finishing up I taught you how as a teacher you create the test unit folder and in the test unit now we have a pretest and a post test. Remember they're exactly identical. So once you create one test, creating a copy and pasting it becomes easy. If you make a mistake, it's really easy to delete it. Okay, now for the student view. Student view, we're going to log in, first name last name and your password okay once you're in you should have only a few icons if you're a sixth grade student if you're a seventh grade student you might still have access to your old social studies icon I'm not sure if it carries over mine stayed with me even though the classes I was in did not I finished them and so therefore I'm done. One thing to notice right away for a student is the running man as we kind of called it. You have the ghost self and then you have the actual shadow self or the dark person. We call this the running man. You got to catch up with your ghost if you're behind. It's a way of self-pacing for the students. Yes, this one I'm really far behind. Okay, it's mostly because I didn't go in and finish marking my activities completed. Okay, here we are. I'm actually ahead on the OMS prime time. That's because based on the time that the teacher is going to assign it, the activities, I've already done some. This is also what's nice about Buzz is how when the students click on what they are going to, it opens up. It's just simple. Look at the buttons and click. You'll also notice that this button is standing out beyond this test unit. That's because this is where I should have started. And it took me to what I f need to finish, my academic honesty assignment. Okay, you can see that I saw the prime time one, followed my directions, familiarize myself with the icons, click the next arrow. Please get the students used to these uh, little buttons up here. Okay, next or back, previous, and show hide sidebar. The show high sidebar is really nice when it comes to assessments because then the whole screen is being used. The rest of the time, this is perfect because then you can see your progress, you can see accomplishments you have to get done. If there's past due, it shows up in red. And of course, down here, you could have the students check for understanding. I'm a little lost. I'm extremely interested. Uh, effort, yeah, okay. This, having the students changing their understanding of the content 
is helpful for you as a teacher. So always have them do as part of their exit out of the computer, assess their understanding of the content. Okay? You might end up with somebody all the way down there. Okay? Or on the other spectrum. Okay? I had variety all last year. And it will change according to the tasks at hand. All right, let's continue on. Oh, sorry. Before I continue on and show you the test folder, I want you to notice one thing right here. It says summary. In the summary link, I want you to notice that it says summary, levels, objectives, portfolio, and scores. Scores is so the students can self-monitor their assignments. I click show the non-gradable activities. That means, you know, it's not a grade in the grade book or in the grade book online. Okay, I have that assignment and that assignment to do and they have under the test unit, I have this assignment to have scores. But I've also looked at that. I've looked at this one, so I've successfully finished that one. And there's a lot more for me to go through. So I highly recommend the students check on their scores here and on PowerSchool. Okay, summary is usually where it logs the students into. That's just this home screen. We're going to hit the white arrow or white blue arrow and go to the next one. It says prime time, you know, getting started, what things to look for. And the academic honesty assignment where they're going to open the contract. And then once they're done, they're going to click show Dropbox and they're going to add that contract into there. Okay. Just like if you were putting it into a discussion board in Moodle or uh, Google Classroom or anything like that, you can do that. One thing that's nice is all of the students are going to have a G Google account and they can save their work and then just paste in the ad web address and that gets submitted to us. Alrighty, let's head on. You want to take a look at the next one? Well, here, Buzz Orientation, it takes the students through. You'll notice there's buttons, and inside the buttons, they also have small boxes. If the box is white, that means it's not completed. Okay, so encourage the students to finish it. Where here, you can see the two I finished, but the one I haven't. Finally, test unit. Okay, does this look familiar? Hit continue. Yeah. Okay. I think when my eyes opens when school starts. Hit submit. Say yes. And it gives me a completion grade. Why would it just give me a check mark? Well, because it's a pretest. But as you noticed, I clicked right here, which allows the students to come in and say, okay, oh, I got one of one, all right, zero of one. I can hide that option as well and just let the students see the questions they answered again or hide all of this completely. One thing is nice how long the student took. So if you have an assessment that requires typing and deep th thinking and you shouldn't have it done in 15 seconds. Um, so that's a good thing to have especially with parent-teacher conferences when parents come in and say hey why did little Susie or Johnny di didn't do very well on the test and I'm like well, let's look at the questions they missed and then let's look at how long it took them to take the test. 
Okay. Fun test. This is my post test now. If I click here, it doesn't show me anything because I haven't done it. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, it says start normally, but where I was measuring it, it's just going to give me the continue. Okay. All right. When my eyes open, and we'll still say false. False. Now I'm going to hit submit. Okay. It now gives me my grade, and it gives me my feedback. Okay. I didn't add any feedback in here. That's why it did not show me anything. It did tell me I got zero of one right, but it still did not show me the correct response in here. Okay, I think that's about it on how to create assessments, how easy it is for to create it as a teacher, administrator, and how easy it is as a student to take it. I also have walked you through what the students have access to. Okay. Sixth grade. Oh, that's because I put that in already. The wet level, so what grade they're in. I have not added objectives to this class or course. Their portfolio. They can upload portfolio into it. For example, there's my portfolio I did for another class when I was taking it. And as you can see, I'm in a whole different classroom, but yet I still have access to all my data there and then the scores. All right, that should be it. Um, again, Buzz is a great resource for you as a teacher. Okay. If you want to know more, definitely look into it.